Ar Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praises on our glory to Yahweh Bosh me Yahweh Shai. Double honor to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Peace salutations to the hopefully elect. Coming at you with another lesson to the spirit and power of Yahweh Bosh me Yahweh Shai. Going to the common board. As you see, this is from a, um, an individual that's, who says, you know, he follows the truth. He's um, in the faith. And he messaged a brother. And, um, you know, asking about where he could find this video right here. Now, this is the brothers in L.A. GMS L.A. Shout out to you, you uh, elders, you brothers out there that's doing a mighty work. So the spirit and power, you how about you, out shy. Um, but just um, to, uh, you know, briefly touch on this comment. I know a lot of it seems like a lot of brothers been, you know, messaging this lately of dealing with Eve. All right. Dealing with Eve wanting to split behind them you know following the truth right so let's read this comment it says appreciate the follow-up that video hit home my wife wants to walk away from me now because i'm living according to the scriptures to the best of my ability and she's ready to split however at my plantation day job three women from india different families three women from india different families want me to meet their fathers and are enamored and so curious, that's what I believe to say, at the strength they see when I carry myself as an Israelite man and follow the laws and culture given to us by Yahweh, uh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, which that's what it should say. It should say, so you spelt the name of the Lord, okay, in the name of his only begotten son, his true name is Yahweh Shai, you, uh, you spelt that incorrectly, but nevertheless, let's continue. It says these women of the other nations are seeing our wake up, seeing our wake up, and want to be a part, while Eve is circling the drain. Okay, and yet Eve, a lot of Eve, which we we refer to the Israelite woman you know, as Eve, a lot of them are circling the drain because why they have clinged on to the serpent. Okay, they have been clinging on to the serpent, and they have been beguiled out of fact let's get that the scriptures this is the book of genesis chapter 3 verse 1 now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the lord the most high has made and he said unto the woman yea the most high has said you should not eat of every tree of the garden and the woman said unto the serpent we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the Goran, but the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the Goran, the Most High said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. For the Most High doeth know that in a day, know in that day ye eat the rub, then your eyes shall be open, and you shall know, or you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Yes, yeah, so what's happening is which has happened back then, and what you see, Esau Edom, the so-called white man, who had that, you know, he, who has that subtle, crafty serpent spirit, is what he have done today, as he done uh, back then, of beguiled Eve. If but he had beguiled, he had deceived Eve through his what, through his philosophies, okay, through his cut, through his customs, okay, because a lot of things that he have set up that he creates, like let's just use feminism for example. You know, he made women believe that you know, feminism was, you know, to set up a creation of for them to be actually free. Okay, for them to actually be equal. But well, all it did was, and I'll just use, throw a few examples out there because a lot has trickled down from that. But he used that to destroy and, and, and break up the household. Okay, to, to create the division between the man and the woman to, to be able to, you know, basically get over on the woman because she no longer has... That, that hedge of protection which would be the man because he's at the point where she thinks she doesn't need a man you know and other things like that so he beguiled her he deceived her and this is why a lot of uh, of our women are clinging on unto this serpent until this day because they have been deceived but little do they know is as he uh, as he is going down well, you know and so is the people that are joined with them and we see a lot of israelite women joining on with um the serpent himself Okay, so that's dealing with the circle and the drain part, which a lot of our women are circling the drain because they're falling away behind this E. Now, let's deal with the first part, okay? You're talking about 
you know, your, your woman wanting to split, okay? And a lot of times this uh, tends to happen with a lot of women because when you uh, wake up to the truth according to the Bible, okay, you get your, uh, this is where you learn, uh, it's how you truly learn how to become a man, okay? It's how you truly learn how to uh, uh, live your life in, in righteous order, how you carry yourself with the righteous vibration so that's why if you're saying you're seeing people or, or if people are seeing you and are noticing that that glow about you okay they, if they're noticing this glow about you they know there's a difference uh about you some people can't really pinpoint it uh or what it, what the case may be you know but a lot of people can tell the difference in the energy that a person carries that is of the faith that is truly of the faith and sincerity than a, a regular worldly person you know your, your conduct your, your morals your, your conversation is just totally different you know so when you may say certain things you might drop a little jewels here and there people start to they they, they start to get uh, 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 um, amazed so to speak of you know or that feeling of something different about this individual he doesn't have the same mindset as as most people that I may talk to in the world okay so there's a glow there's a glow about you know the men of the Lord right now let's go to this right dealing about dealing with a woman okay and this is not you know no relationship advice or anything specifically you know, for you but I want to go into this a little bit because the scriptures deal with you know every aspect everything you can think of the scriptures deal with right so let's start at the top first Corinthians chapter 7 verse 1 it says now concerning the things where ye wrote unto me it is good it is good for a man not to touch a woman nevertheless to avoid fornication let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband let the husband render unto the wife do benevolence and likewise also the wife unto the husband the wife have not power over her own body but the husband and likewise also the husband have not power over his own body but the wife okay so what you were what you see where paul is going into is he is going into how you know a husband and a wife are to treat one another all right how you know you see a lot of women how they create this this withholding you know themselves from men you're, you're really not supposed to be doing that unless it's in a unless it's in the case of i mean to your husband unless it's in the case of the time of your uncleanliness and it deals with the same way the man you can't you're not really to a uh, hold out on a woman in, unless it's in the case of you know a high holy day the sabbath uh, a day before you go to, uh, to the altar you see verse 5 it says defraud ye not the other except it be with consent for a time that you may give yourselves to fasting and prayer and come to and come together again that Satan tempt you not for your incontentity incontentity so incontent TNC and incontent NC verse 6 but I speak this by permission and not of commandment right and Paul has he always uh, gave spiritual advice right and Paul knew the law the in and out of the law is touching a law uh, touching the law and Pharisee okay so Paul knew that he had that down packed but in this case he's speaking uh, he's speaking uh, uh, he's giving high a uh, spiritual advice and remember this is the this is a man that was taught by Yahweh Shai himself right so people that's trying to discredit Paul's writings you're crazy right this man this man had, had a, 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 a um, everyone has an important role in the Holy Scriptures and when you look at Paul's writings when you look at Paul's messages a lot of them are stumbling blocks into people because Paul because Paul the way Paul spoke or the way way it, it could be worded it's like I don't, I don't understand that when it takes a very spiritual uh, individual to understand this and discern what Paul is actually saying but that's why t teachers come in place to help you with that as well let's continue for I would that all men were even as I myself, but every man have his proper gift of the Most High. 
one after this manner and another after that. I say, therefore, to the unmarried and widows, it is good for them if they abide even as I. Paul didn't deal with women. You see? So this is why Paul is saying this. Paul is he's letting you know this for a reason. Because just see, in this day and age, okay, it's trouble in the flesh. Okay, it's trouble in the flesh. You know, as these a lot of things were to were to be blessings into us. Well, of course, because of our disobedience, a lot of these things have became a cur become a curse unto us. It says, but if they cannot contain, let them marry. For it is better better to marry than to burn. You see, so Paul is saying, look, if you if you can't contain yourselves, if you can't, you know, uh, uh, you know, withhold yourself, right? Well, then go. Well, well deal, marry. And when you deal with the scriptures, marriage is sex according to the Holy Scriptures. As a matter of fact, let's get that because this could be for a new believer as well, waking up to the truth. The book of Genesis, chapter 24, verse 67. And it reads, it says, And Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent and took Rebekah, and she became his wife, and he loved her. And Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. You see? So after Isaac's, uh, so this is you see what happened of Isaac, Papa and Rebecca, and through that she became his wife. Okay, they joined together. They became what twain. They became one flesh. You see, but that's that's from the act of, of sex and what consummates the marriage, sex. Right. I'm not really gonna get too much into that in this lesson. Just trying to hit a, a few main points. Um, back to 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10, it says, and, 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 and unto the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord, let not the wife depart from her husband. You see? And unto the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord, let not the wife depart from her husband. You see? And... Uh, the reason why these women attempt to do this, and especially now day and age, is because they have this this independent mindset. They have the backing by their girlfriends or you know um, uh, their different family members who think worldly, and they got the backing from Esau Edom, who wants it to be this way, who wants the division to be amongst the household, who wants to be able to have the control of, over the mindset of the woman trickling down to the children. That's what he wants. So that's why he gives them these different benefits or advantages when they do do these things like this. Okay? He don't want the two parties to be like-minded. But the Lord loves that when a man and his wife are joined together, you know, beautifully, you know, uh, 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 like-minded, so to speak. Okay? Take that with a grain of salt. Uh, verse 11 but but and if she depart let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband and let not the husband put away his wife so if she leaves the woman is supposed to remain unmarried she's not supposed to be going to go deal with another man right and that's what's highly being done in the society and exalted what's being done in society is women are, are getting divorces with their husbands or leaving their husbands and what are they doing they are going they're dealing with other men that is that is acts of adultery okay and then for the on a man's part you can't put your woman away you can't just put her away okay and, uh, unless it's in the case of a uh, 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 adultery you know but you just can't put her away because you know she she got she got too maybe she have she got too big and you don't like the way she look or she's not doing this right and she ain't doing that right yeah it, it's stressful yeah it's a headache of certain things but you just can't put her away because if you do put her away in in, in you know she go out and deal well now it falls on you for the case of adultery because you caused her to commit adultery because you put her away you know so whatever situation y'all may be going through y'all just got to work it out and try to figure some some something out you know now you know it's case you know if, if you get a, a a woman that's being a complete demon you know like a, a complete demon okay i'm not talking about oh she don't cook today or she don't do this day that day i'm talking about a complete complete psycho demon you know hindering you in this truth well you gotta you gotta you know just throw some prayers up you know talk to the lord about that he'll guide you he'll direct your steps on, on what to do 
<clears throat> so verse 11 again but and if she depart let her remain and remarry or be reconciled to her husband and let not the husband put away his wife but to the rest speak i not the lord if any brother have a wife that believeth not and she be pleased to dwell with him let him not put her away so if you have a wife and she's an unbeliever okay but she's pleased to dwell then you you can't put her away right and the woman which have a husband that believeth not so on the flip side a woman you're a believer okay and you got a husband that's an unbeliever and if he and if he be pleased to dwell with her let her not leave him so you can't leave him because he's an unbeliever and you had a lot a lot of people would do this of uh, okay he's an unbeliever or she's an unbeliever i'm leaving him i want to be joined to somebody you know that's a believing which i get it you know but the scriptures say you're not supposed to do so okay and if that person is pleased to dwell you know then that's what it is verse 14 says for the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband else were your children unclean but now they are holy but if the unbelieving depart let them depart a brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases but the most high have called us to peace check that out okay check that out read that again verse 15 but if the unbelieving depart let them depart um, a brother or sister is not under bondage in such cases but the most High have called us to peace for, for what knowest thou O wife whether thou shalt save thy husband or how knowest thou O man whether thou shalt save thy wife but as the most High have distribute to every man as the lord have called everyone so let him walk in so ordain i and all churches so that's really the point on that i uh, know if you if you got an unbelieving wife okay you can't put you can't put her away because she's not a believer and you women same thing if you got an unbelieving husband you can't put him away because they're a non-believer you see but you you may you never know that you may you know by your actions through the spirit you know get them to one day and say you know what you know I, i'm feeling i mean it's up to the lord ultimately but they can say i'm, I'm you know i'm digging this i'm digging this vibe you know i, I love this righteous vibration or the spirit to you and uh, can you help me uh you know know more about this they may inquire more you see it's a process of different things okay but uh yeah so um so that pretty much touches you know on that um I just want to touch on a little bit more. It says, however, at my plantation day job, three women from India, different families, want me to meet their fathers and are enamored and so curious at the strength they see when I carry myself. So, okay, so there, there's three women at your job from India and they want you to meet your fathers. I mean, if you look right now, we got the end of this thing. And, you know, I really, I, I personally say me, you know, as, as good as this sounds, you know, um, I probably would have to refrain myself <laughs> the best I can because, you know, even the, those women from the other nations, they, they, they honor, you know, Jake, the ones that is not, the came, the ones that is, that's not been uh, a Babylonianized, so to speak, right? They, they know how to treat Jake. They know how to reverence Jake the way we want to be reverent. So that's why we would, you know, mostly, you know, the men of our nation will cleave to them because these heathen, you know, the the head the, the ancient Middle East mentality. You know, that that's what we want. I get it. You know, but in this time, day and age, you talking about three of them. It, it, it's, 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 I, I wouldn't uh I wouldn't mess with that. Uh lawful unto me. Now, you know, the scriptures talk about you as a man, it's it's your right to have multiple women, you know. And a lot of women leave men in the truth behind that aspect alone, but it is what it is, you know? But even though knowing something, we can't, you know, it's it's always not wise to, you know, act on it. Let's get this, 1 Corinthians 6, verse 12. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will, be, will not be brought under the power of any. So... Read that again all things are lawful to unto me but all things are not expedient so dealing with the case of you know a man having multiple women yes it's lawful for a man to have multiple women okay but that's not expedient in that time 
right? And look at the way how everything is going on in society has how just inflation and everything is just soaring to the roof. Having multiple women, you are, you know, your, your duty is to take care of those women that you deal with. So you talk about those three women, and if you still deal with your wife, that's four women. You gotta be a you gotta be a multi millionaire to be able to afford all those women. You see, you gotta be able to afford all those women. You know, to have them as, as your wives. You see, so I I, I really wouldn't um look. I I, I wouldn't deal. That, that's just my suggestion. But I'm just I'm just throwing that out there. Um, yeah. So this thing is lawful unto us, but it's. It's just, it doesn't, it's not beneficial. Why? Because we should be focusing upon the Lord without distraction. Matter of fact, I think that's in this chapter as well. Um, it is. Let's just jump down here. Verse 32. First Corinthians says so verse 32. But I will have you with but I will have you without carefulness. He that is unmarried care for the things that belong to the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But he that is married care for the things that are of the world and how he may please his wife. So <laughs> let alone we can't even please <laughs> you know, we can't even please Eve now. I mean that's what you got, or you may have a heathen, I don't know. But the two, three of them. <laughs> You can forget about it. You see? So what why don't even put that burden on yourself? You know? There's no need to put that extra burden on yourself. Okay. Um Verse 34. There's a difference also between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman care for the things of the Lord. That she may be holy both in body and in spirit. But she that is married care for the things of the world. How she may please her husband. And as for this, I speak for your own profit, right? This will be beneficial unto you. Not that I may cast a snare upon you, which the snare goes into the trap. But for that which is comely, and that ye may attend upon the Lord without distraction. So you see this, this spiritual advice that our big brother, Apostle Paul, has given, right? For the man and for the woman. That is that is being concerned in the faith. You see, oh, this is what I wanted to get. This in Exodus, talk about the duty. Here we go. Exodus chapter 21 verse 10 it says if he take him another wife her food her raiment and her duty of marriage shall he not diminish and if he do not these three into her then shall she go out free without money all right so yeah you add into your if you add on to yourself all these women all right which they end up coming your wives, but on a he on a heathen standpoint, you know, uh, they only can go to con the further they can go to is concubines. Okay, the Israelite woman will be made our wives, but the heathen women will be concubines. You know, but adding into these women, you will have to do what? Adding into yourself all these women, you will have to you know be able to you know afford these women, so to speak. It's different than if you you just talk them out. Getting a little, a, a little, you know, a pot, a, a side meal. You know, if you if you're dealing with, you know, a woman that's about to beg, so to speak, and, and if that's it, you know, but you ha trying to have these arranged marriages and, and stuff like that, hell to the all. We ain't in that time. We ain't in the time of serve, trying to serve the Lord to the best of our ability without distraction and trust and believe. Women can be and distraction okay so i mean that, that's pretty much it my touch on that just to you know for individuals that's newly in the faith and you know having questions or, or thinking you know in this in this mindset you know just not just my uh, a point of view on it you know like i said um really it's not no 
and uh, you know advice dealing with you per se, but it, it's the mindset that some brothers may have in this time, which, like I say, our focus should be upon Yahweh, Bashin Shai. Okay, first and foremost. But there's extra things you want to add into yourself and burdens. It's, it's don't even don't even risk it, brother. You know, brothers out there, don't even don't even risk things that's unnecessary and that's not profitable unto you. So, till next time, I want to say shalom.